Hi everyone and welcome to Real Life Talks. I am your host Yvonne Heath, author of the book Love Your Life to Death and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. I have a bracelet in here somewhere. I Just Showed Up. Joining me today is the lovely Sue Kelly. Hello, Sue. Hi, Yvonne. I'm it, yeah, so I'm, excited to be here we're, today. We're both excited, I know. Sue and I go back several years now, um, and I've just we've watched each other's journeys and supported each other's journeys, mm -hmm. and I love everything that you do. And we're here to talk about still being still sexy after sexy. You got it, honey. Yeah, that's yes, right. indeed. And look at us in our gorgeously matching outfits. <laughs> <laughs> because we still got it going on and um, tell our audience what is still sex sexy after 60 what does it all mean well back when I was approaching 60 mm -hmm. I didn't like the idea of turning 60 it just yes. sounded old yeah you know I had no trouble turning 40 or 50 but 60 60 oh, just didn't it just did it to me and mm -hmm. I thought it seemed unfair because it felt like society was saying they stamped my forehead with the best before date mm. and I didn't feel like my life was over exactly you know I still had a lot of energy I still felt I was relevant and I had I could make a difference and yeah man I still felt sexy thank you very much right well, it really and we both know that being feeling sexy is not about your chronological age absolutely no not at all I mean and as we do age I mean we know we are I wanted to change the conversation about getting old mm -hmm. like it's the next great adventure and upon retirement everybody can uh, kind of change it for themselves yes. and if you in the past if you woulda coulda shoulda right well, now's the time to do it Good. because the other sad reality is none of us know how long we have to live when that green grim reaper yeah. well you're preaching you know, to the choir now of you know course, that, that's right, right yes. Yvonne. Yes. <laughs> so you know if you want to ensure that you've left a legacy mm -hmm. or that your life mattered mm -hmm. then do it now do it now yes at any age at, at any age of course yes but you are embracing retirement. You're reframing it, not exactly. saying, oh, you know, and haven't we all met women? Or Women are notorious for this. They get to a certain age and they turn frumpy and you're not supposed to wear color. Oh, my. Hey, look I'm at us. Sorry, I don't even think so. And what's so. that about blue jeans? Oh, I know. I told you about that. I saw on Facebook somebody saying, why women over 50 should not wear blue jeans? I don't think so. It, yeah, thank you very uh -huh. much. We are sporting our heels, our blue jeans, our beautiful colors. And today they've got them stretch Come jeans, on. every kind of style. Yeah. If you like them, if you like them. There go for is it. only one reason to not wear blue jeans after 50 because you don't want to. That is the only reason. And color. You know, I, you gave me this beautiful scarf and I had to wear it. I didn't know we were going to match so gorgeously <laughs> today, but how fabulous. But, you know, having color in your life and mm -hmm. why do we have mm -hmm. to reach a certain age and dress beige? I've never seen you in beige. Do you wear, do you wear <laughs> right? But, but why do women sometimes feel that they are a certain age, they should behave a certain way or not have, look at your glasses. Your glasses are fabulous. You know, oh, big you. Rim. Yes. But why do we do that to ourselves? And so, you know, what you're making me think about mm. is, you know, back in the 60s with the first sexual revolution, mm -hmm. um, we're children of the 60s. So oh. we're, you know, 50 and 60 turning 60 and 70. Mm -hmm. And we disrupted society back then. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. With our music, with fighting for what's right, with fighting for the environment. Sure. Uh, and sexual equality, mm -hmm. uh, women's rights. And gay rights, mm -hmm. and now we're doing it again. We're like doing, it's actually, we're still it's doing never it. stopped. Yes. No, we're still never doing stopped. it. But now we are in our 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s mm -hmm. can disrupt society again. Absolutely. And we're going to uh, take risks. See, part of my book mm -hmm. that I'm writing, yes, very still exciting. sexy after 60: mm -hmm. Seven Secrets to Finding Life's Sweet Spot, is about. Uh, taking risks and so what if it doesn't work out like exactly. let's you know the risks we took back in the 60s and said let's do it again sure and change what aging is all about oh I just love it and here's the thing is to me whatever you want to do whatever you want to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. there's no limit can you there's you can no recreate your life exactly 
in any decade. I did yes. it at age 50, right? Took a big leap of faith. You did, and, Yvonne. Yeah. Became an author, TV, TV host. Who knew that you was going to happen? You left your nursing happen? career? I did. The security was, oh, yeah. of having a... A yes, paycheck. I, it was very frightening, and, and it's wonderful. I met terrific people like you, who you were a nurse for many years as well, right? Exactly. Well, tell me about your nursing career, and how, how did that shape what you're doing now? Well, it's interesting, because the bulk of my career was always in home care. Okay. But I, uh, I trained at St. Michael's Hospital, and mm -hmm. then I just... Uh, wanted an adventure so I took off to northern Manitoba oh. and I worked with um, indigenous populations when there. people want an, a great adventure they go to northern Manitoba I know. <laughs> is that that's okay you know yeah. uh, <laughs> that sounds like an adventure yes. well you know what it was great because I met people from all over Canada and okay. actually the United Kingdom England and Australia wow. New Zealand and I'm still really good friends with them today mm -hmm. but uh, but then it was really home care where I had the privilege of entering into people's homes and got to know people intimately on a level that, you know, others didn't. And I saw how um, sometimes it was the decisions people made that had detrimental effects mm -hmm. or it was the brave caregivers who, you know, were there 24-7 and supporting their loved ones on their health journey. Right. Okay. And then I got into palliative care. Wow. And, uh, uh, and I loved palliative care. Yes. And again, another synergy with you. Absolutely. It's a privilege to it be really a part of is. that journey in life and at end of life. And that's another thing we can reframe. I know. It is, it's an honor, isn't it? It is, mm -hmm. indeed. And, you know, I um, really had a good time in palliative care. Yeah. And people would think, what, Sue? What? You, know, you had a good time in palliative sad. care? Oh, God, no. don't. It's too scary. But, no, I really believed in helping people live with every time they had left. Yes. And having a sense of humor and telling jokes and... And, you know, you know, well, it's already serious enough. Goodness. Isn't it? When mm -hmm. we're facing end of life. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, what you're talking about is living your life to the fullest in every decade and right till your last breath. Right? And true. And so I was just thinking about it because the one of the chapters in my book mm -hmm. is on relationships. And it's all kinds of different relationships. There's family, how family and coupling has changed about LGBTQ2 yes. relationships. Yes. But also if you're single and about online dating. Sure. So there's all the stories on that. But then we got into the last vigil and how on um, our lake that um, a cottager, actually a permanent resident, mm -hmm. he was diagnosed at 53 with glioblastoma, one okay. of the deadliest cancers right. there at is. At 53, my at age. At 53, yeah. okay. Yeah. But it was how the whole village came together. Oh, and we just that. showed up. You just showed I, up. We just showed um, up, so could just, Yeah, and isn't that beautiful, mm -hmm. right? We don't always need a professional. You need professionals here and there, but you mm -hmm. need your village, people who, who you love and who love you. How extraordinary. So you spent time, everyone uh, spent time with yes, them? Yes, they did. And, um, and what in the end, was that it was a legacy for the next generation. Exactly. How to live even if you're dying. Oh, that is it just... It really touched my heart. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, again, when you look back and say, we really just, we showed up for that person. And sometimes that's not easy. It's no. emotional. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but that's okay. Just show up anyway, right? So, so on to a different subject, okay. Sue, because um, <laughs> you are creating change. So, Still Sexy After 60 is your book, and mm -hmm. you just completed the manuscript. I did. I'm just so excited, and I'm so getting it exciting. out there for the world, and literary yes. agents, come on, come on board. That's right. Fight to be yes. my literary agent. You really yes, should. Yes, and publish this book. Still Sexy After 60, it, 60 it's an important topic, and and you also there you have hosted two women's wellness conferences. I did. So while I was writing the book, yes. I had this idea about why not bring women together of mm -hmm. of a certain age. Yes. You know. <laughs> Yeah, fifties. There were those in their forties because oh, yeah, they knew they're going to sure. get here eventually. Anyway, exactly. You know? Prepare before you're yeah. facing it. Exactly. Right, yeah. right into their nineties, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't believe the overwhelming response. So we held our first one a couple of years ago in Gravenhurst, in Gravenhurst right, at the Opera House. That's right in Muskoka, and it was wonderful. And then the second year we did it again, mm -hmm. and uh, this year I'm uh, I'm not going to be doing it again right. because I needed to finish my manuscript. Sure. But uh, what's interesting is I am going to be bringing it to um, the greater Toronto area. Awesome. And so, I mean, stay tuned to my website because Absolutely. the events will be posted there. Mm -hmm. But the other way I want to bring it across Canada and North America is by licensing the program. Okay. So 
an organization, and often I'm talking with a hospice organization right now mm -hmm. who's interested in me providing the template, all the national sponsors, which could be local sponsors as well. Of course. And all of the, the um, marketing, the marketing plan, the save the date, the blogs, the mm -hmm. announcements, the contracts for all the speakers, and I know what the success is. Have fabulous speakers with oh, yes. scientifically based knowledge, like accurate information, surround people in like cashmere comforts of some oh, really lovely place yes. and and give them bracelets and give like them this, bracelets this everybody got a bracelet this gorgeous bracelet i got i i love my bracelet yes and, and the second year, year everybody we wrap them with this beautiful scarf yes we surprised Amazing. them lots of surprises and um lots of joy yes and it was um and so awesome. that will yeah so you will continue that once your manuscript but the mm -hmm. the thing is you provided information yes. but a sisterhood that's and right you um, pampered people and you gave mm. them information we laughed we cried Carol mm -hmm. Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi oh my goodness hysterical <laughs> she I actually felt okay. like I had a workout I was like I just worked out because I was laughing so hard I had well, the tears she she's part hysterical. of my magic cup uh, template is having she Carol. is yes. magic but the other thing as you as I said you know sue and you're in in our conversation what would be a, an important topic what would you like to talk about and I read your email say can we talk about vaginas oh my god the V word what your lady flowers <laughs> so I did get permission because I thought okay. I don't know but apparently we can because really it is a part of our bodies and we don't talk about it so nobody no talks about talks it to, what, okay. what, what do we what do we need to know what do we need to talk about vaginas well and you know I hadn't it hadn't been brought forward in my mind is that it was such an important topic right till I was writing my chapter on still uh, sorry 60 shades of gray 60 shades 60 of shades <laughs> of gray I love it and yes. sex love and intimacy sure and um, it's um, it's my best chapter. It's oh, my longest I bet. chapter. It's your juicy chapter. Oh, it is. And my whole book has over 70 stories. Wow. 70 I real, love authentic it. stories. Beautiful. But at any rate, as I was doing my research on this, and I mean, I've got a vagina too. Oh, you know, yes. yeah. Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah, I do. Yes. Yes, okay. yes we do. And, um, and we never talk about it we, amongst no, ourselves. No, we don't. We don't talk about it with our doctor, really. No, actually. So we just don't. And how often does the doctor say, and so, Yvonne, how's your vagina today? No, so far, not. I'm 0 for 0. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh for all. No, I don't think it's. But we don't even talk to our girlfriends. We don't. We don't. And our cause mothers, we don't talk to our daughters. No. And not I'm, really. you know, a guilty yes. yes. Yes, but, you know, so there's a natural aging that happens to our vaginas, sure. the whole area down there. Yes. And it's uh, a, uh, the mucosa, the lining of the vagina becomes uh, not as thick. Yeah. It becomes drier and it shrinks and it can be very, very painful for women. Right. I mean, a lot happens to that little canal. Right. You know, it was the birth canal. Well, it's, it's the gone. canal yes, of love. It's, it's the canal now. Yes. And um, the canal and, of love. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've never called it that. But yes, <laughs> the canal no. of love. Yes. But you know, you're right. And, and so that's a natural. Mm -hmm. Occurrence. It is, and you know, I after the conference, there was a woman who came up to me, and she said, "Oh, Sue, I need your help." She said, "I got dry snatch." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Okay, you bet your beat your yes. sweet bippy. I'm going to be helping you." Yeah. So we met, and um, I introduced to her I um, sort of a little template, a little app, an app. You want to call it in my yeah. book. Okay. Happy. A P I E. Okay. And as a nurse, you yes. would understand, assess, yes. plan, implement, and evaluate. Mm. So we hmm. we I implemented this appy with her. And so she had been to the doctor, and the doctor had said, Yes, you've got um atrophic vaginitis. Wow. It's also called vulvovaginal atrophy. My goodness. It's also called genital urinary syndrome of menopause. Wow. Like who knew all that lot. was going who down knew? there? No yes. wonder you can't find the G-spot with all that <laughs> happening down there. <laughs> goodness gracious. Yes. So, at any rate, he could hardly get the speculum in. Oh, So that's And it terrible. was like the tissues are rubbing and it's very, very painful. painful. She um, had lost her husband 10 years earlier and actually had not been interested in finding another man until sure. just recently. Oh, she was, you know, okay. missed the companionship mm -hmm. and she was... Um, she was a little bit horny. Oh, yes. Is that word allowed? I, I have no idea. I but we'll anyway, find out. we'll find out. 
Yes. And so she she had done her assessment. She'd gone to the doctor, first of all. Yeah. Okay, so that's important. Because Absolutely. if the doctor's going to pres prescribe any medication, he has to know. And what he did prescribe for her was an estrogen patch. Okay. And you've got to know that you do not have a family history of breast cancer, uterine cancer. You don't smoke. There aren't blood clots. So... Yeah, there's, it's, there's pros Certain, and cons, yeah. but there's things you can do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yes. so I brought my little bag of tricks, and I had vibrators oh, in different yes. sizes. She gave everybody you know, a vibrator at the conference. That you was our seen, Oprah moment. Oh, you should have seen everyone's face. They, <laughs> like deer in the headlight. <gasps> Everybody's going <laughs> to get one. You're going to get one, and you're going to get one. Right uh, it was fantastic. So it was uh, people, you missed me over here. Oh, geez. Mm -hmm. But your anyway, whole point is there are to... things you can do. You don't Absolutely. have to just suffer in silence, right? No, and you know, there are, it's a wonderful vaginal moisturizer. And normally, I never mention a product okay. ever. But this is the only product as a vaginal moisturizer that's been recommended by the Canadian Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Okay. It's called Gynotroph. Okay. And it's just a little, um, you just... Uh, fill up a little applicator and you insert it into the vagina mm -hmm. um, and uh, seven, seven nights the first week and then just uh, twice a week after that. What's, be what's beautiful about it is that it's natural ingredients, mm -hmm. high hyaluronic acid, oh. vitamin E, and our body already makes them. It's part of our skin. Right. So, and so, actually, I'm doing that twice a week now. Well, good for I'm, you, I'm Sue. I'm lubricating my vagina and my vulva. That's the outside <laughs> area. The vulva's the uh, outside area. Yeah, the yeah. Old, some people think the whole thing's the vagina. Yeah, no. I know. You've got the outer lips, the inner There's lips. There's all kinds you know, of stuff. And then yes. you've got, yeah. So... The point is, we can do something, and aging, there's a natural part of aging that we can't stop that, but we can do things about it. And, you know, allowing yourself to just suffer in silence is silly, and That's we need to, right. we need to have these conversations. Of silence, conspiracy. And I want to start the vagina dialogue. There you go. Yes, let's so, start talking. Absolutely. Well, I feel like we've talked about them. Your okay. vagina is quite a bit now. Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. But what else, you know, when you talk about feeling still sexy after 60, it's about not letting your spirit get old, right? And, and t tell me what else <coughs> women, um, women can do. And well, should... it's about the body, mind, and spirit. Right. So that is uh, throughout the entire book. Yes. My first chapter is on the body. And so first of all, it's being as healthy as you can be. Oh, really? yes, and, 100%. And look, well, look what's in your gene pool, because mm. that's a clue okay. to where... You, what your life could be like. It's just smart. That's like, an important you know, one. Yeah, we don't often is. think about. Yes. yes. And I mean, it's boring, but it's weight and diet and uh, being active. If you mm -hmm. don't lose it, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Right. So it's some of that. So that's in the chapter on the body. Mm -hmm. And then the mind. The brain is a very, very interesting chapter. There's so much about our feelings and emotions and thoughts and, uh, and mindfulness is uh, mm. what is mindfulness? People talk about mindfulness a lot, mm -hmm. but what is, yes, what is mindfulness? Well, it's really just being in the moment. Yes. Totally focusing in on concentrating on whatever it is that you're doing. If you're talking with someone, yet you are totally engaged. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about your grocery list or I've exactly. got to get, get going here. What's the next thing I need you to know? do? And then you're doing mm -hmm. that and then you're thinking of the next thing you mm -hmm. need to do. We're all guilty of that. Yeah, but totally. It's, it really does cause like a chronic stress in your body, doesn't you know it? You know what? That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's just allowing yourself that time with that in that moment. And meditation is another wonderful strategy to help relax the spirit and uh, focus in on what's really important. And some people will um, plan their day so that maybe it's first thing in the morning or just at bedtime, but it ever. So um, there's parts about that in in, in the there, book as in well. The well, yeah, yeah, and and you have a website and you have information on your website There's, as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what I see that still sexy after sixty is a community, and you are building this, and there'll be more and more information because I know at the first conference there was a woman talking about brain health. Oh yes, yes, that was Lynn Poslin yes. from the Women's Brain Health Initiative. It was and extraordinary, that's fascinating. So if you take care of your heart, you take care of your brain. And did you know that seventy percent of those living with Alzheimer's are women. 70%. 70 percent. So wow. why is that? I didn't know it was that you high. So it's a great organization. Yeah, so it, mm -hmm. it is truly about being informed. But, you know, really the greatest thing, the greatest message is self-care. 
you know, sometimes people, it's a buzzword, oh yes, yes, self-care, but women are notoriously poor self-care givers. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? No, no. I mean, absolutely. Yes. And the best thing we can do for ourselves is put ourselves first, take care of ourselves, and then we're able, then we're able to be mindful and totally giving to the other person. Because if you don't, you could have a crisis of person, you could have a breakdown or dealing with health issues, and then you're no good to anyone. Well, I, I always tell people, and that's, you know, I have seven takeaways in my presentation, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. takeaway number four is show up for yourself first. Mm -hmm. And if you do not, eventually you will break down mentally, physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. or spiritually. Mm -hmm. How do I know? Ask me in 30 years of nursing, how many stories, how many oh, stories have, have we, you? Have we seen, yeah. Yes. yes. And Indeed. the and sad then, thing is, sorry, a lot okay. of it's preventable. Right? That is what the, the good news is here. Yeah. Yes, there you, you go. can Reframe prevent me. a lot of downstream problems by just paying attention to yourself. Yes, wow. mm -hmm. I, I just, I love everything you're doing. And so what, tell me some of the really feel good moments. I mean, besides this woman who came up to mm -hmm. you at the conference and you talked about, you know, her, her dr dry vagina. Um, what other good, <laughs> good stories do you have that women? Well, I recall one woman um, being a, in a, a side hall outside of the opera house and she was crying oh. and she was in her 70s and she said I, I finally have a reason to live wasn't that sad that she needed someone or live. something to make her feel relevant and that she wanted to uh, re-energize her life and find a purpose the other part of that whole thing is what is your purpose in life sure and uh, and that can change but having a goal and a passion linking into that passion is is huge oh that is a whole we need a whole other uh show for that because you know when we that that really choked me up that made me feel sad that she you know mm -hmm. because so much of the time we feel like well i i have value and i matter because i'm a wife i have value and i matter because i'm a mother and you know you have value and you matter because you exist just because you exist yes <laughs> this yes. is what i you know the message for kids teens seniors and it's not about your age, you know, you, you don't have value and you matter more because you're young. You just have value. And mm -hmm. to me, the greatest gift you are to the world is the very best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Beautiful. And the other thing is, is that maybe in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on, the activities that you are able to do to keep yourself healthy have changed, right? Mm. Maybe you can't do a 10K marathon, which yes. I have never been able to do. But what can you do? Exactly, because chronic illness yes. sneaks in. Painful joints, living with a, a chronic health problem is part of aging. Sadly, yes, it at any age, but it's sure. more so for sure. And so it's living with that chronic illness and not making it your whole focus, but mm. uh, you know, following, you know, doctor's instructions, taking medication as prescribed, keeping active. Maybe you need a support group. You know, surrounding yourself with people who care, and um, and still following your dreams. You can still follow your dreams. You can, mm -hmm. and no matter what you are facing, there is somebody out there somewhere that cares and that would be willing to just show up for you if it's not your family if it's you know like I said a support group or someone be, be okay to reach out as well we're we're very notoriously oh I'm okay you know I don't need any help yes aren't we and mm -hmm. we that's another thing yes. we really need to change it's like, yeah I need some help yeah How just say lasagna you, can you yes. make me a lasagna <laughs> like, yes be okay, yeah. you know. I, again, I think women often really pride themselves on, you know, holding it all together and I don't need any help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's just, let's be okay with being sexy and, and colorful and pampering ourselves and putting ourselves first because we are also being a very great example yes. to others. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And to the next generation. To the next generation. It's a legacy to it how is. they can live and enjoy aging as well. Absolutely, so what keeps you so sexy? Because you are, Sue, I have to tell you, you are one sexy woman. What keeps you sexy? Besides, you know, I mean, you've got beautiful hair, fabulous glasses, like the exterior, but what keeps you sexy on the inside? Well, you know, first of all, relationships. I guess I've got a fabulous husband. Yes, like my husband, Paul. He's very cute. Is his, <laughs> he is easy on the he's eyes, adorable. but he's just like the wind beneath my wings. And oh, that's so I mean, wonderful. If, you, if you can, you know, enhance any relationship, 
I think that's really important. Or w and if you are single, mm -hmm. it's having wonderful friends. Yes. Or, and um, having that passion, following your passion. And what is that? And following it because the self satisfaction is enormous. Yes, it's so true. Mm -hmm. And so, so you foresee bringing still sexy after six, sixty with your book, mm -hmm. conferences, and and sharing it with the world. I hope so. That's the plan, Yvonne. That is the plan. Well, it's an extraordinary plan, and women everywhere will benefit. And you know, I think that even just reading a chapter or attending a conference, it just gives you that aha moment. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is, right. you're not alone in this. Yes, indeed. Right? There's a lot of us. There's a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, there's baby boomers, and like, we're, there's thousands and thousands and thousands. And you know, we, we've been to the circus, we've been through stuff in life. Mm -hmm. and lots of stuff. Lots of stuff in mm -hmm. life. And you know, a lot of good and some not so good, but you know, you're still It's here. not a life sentence. The past is not a life sentence. Just learn from it. There you and go. And then carry on. Uh, and that's, those are just such mm -hmm. wise words because if we let the past define us, right? Because of course with every mm -hmm. decade we have that much more that we've been through. Mm -hmm good and some not so good but if we let that define us then we can yes. we, we can suffer excessively and ruin what can be it can be the greatest part of your life it's the next great adventure it is the next mm -hmm. great adventure and you are absolute proof of that and i cannot wait to read your book it's going to be so extraordinary. Well, thank you. And I know, I know the conferences will keep happening because women are going to demand it. I'm demanding I hope it. So. I'm saying, I'm saying, Sue, I absolutely need these conferences. I can't wait. I, I'm going to go to the next one. And well, you'll be a speaker at my next one for sure. Absolutely. Again, absolutely. Again. Yes. How fun! Yes, so girlfriend. I have to thank you for everything that you're doing. You are still fabulously. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh yes, yeah, still sexy after sixty. For sure, absolutely, <laughs> and keep those jeans on. Thank you very much. Absolutely, right? You I bet. mean, please don't tell me not to wear jeans ever. <laughs> yeah. So thanks again, Sue. You're <laughs> so thanks for joining us today. Real Life Talks is about just showing up for yourself and others, and sometimes having hard conversations or talking about things we don't normally talk about, and that's okay. So my call to action: if you want to be empowered and resilient, you need to plan your life plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always, there we go. <laughs> bring your own tambourine to the party. <laughs> Thanks, bye for now.